Yes, yes. It is okay now. Good afternoon. Good to see good you. How are you? Yeah, I'm okay. I'm doing good. And uh, what about you? How are you, ma'am? Yes, I'm doing well too. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you for uh, taking me there in your channel and uh, inviting me over. I'm so glad to be your, I mean, uh, to take this conversation, to have this conversation. I'm really happy to connect with you. So thank um, you. Thank you for connecting. So I want you to tell a little about you to my view viewers. Okay. So uh, as you know, my name is Rekha Datta and I come from Prayagraj, uh, a city renowned for spiritual and uh, historical significance. And uh, currently I'm teaching in a school, you know, uh, it's it's an intermediate college and I, I am actually a government lecturer, you can say English lecturer. Okay. And uh, additionally, yeah, additionally, I have two YouTube channels. Uh, one is dealing with wow. uh, grammar. I'm mm -hmm. uh, in, uh, advanced label English grammar. And another, uh, it is delving about the human, uh, you know, relationship problems or issues which comes. It's a kind of psychological, mm -hmm. uh, you know, channel you can say, which I have just started. I just launched it. So it's not uh, just, you know, just started working on it. So it is just, it hasn't grown yet, you know. It's, it takes time to grow. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, you wear multiple hats, I would say. You have two YouTube channels. You work full time as a lecturer. Wow, very nice. Thank you so much, ma'am. Thank you so much. So, so do you are you passionate about psychology? Have you learned something about it? And no. uh, like, why did you exactly come up with it? Basically, I'm very fond of uh, delving deep inside human relationship and knowing a lot about it based on my own whole experience of life. I did not learn it from somewhere. Even it was not my, you know, one of the subjects. You can, can't see that it was not my subject. But mm. still, I have a kind of obsession for this uh, subject. And uh, I feel that now I have come to a level of maturity where I can solve out the problems which actually I have faced in my life. So that's why always I come with some solution and I always claim that I'm not a psychologist. I'm doing it for my, it just something, you know, which I feel that I have the capacity to solve that out. It's not mm -hmm. that I'm, I'm a psychologist. I'm doing mm -hmm. it for my, you know, love for this language, uh, mm -hmm. this thing. Okay. Yeah. okay yeah so since you teach grammar and you have a, like you have a lot of experience teaching grammar in college i i want to ask you like if a beginner starts speaking english so what are what are like what should he or she focus on first in order to start speaking yeah yeah you tell me that how to make a student understand that how to create a sentence, yeah. So basically what happens, ma'am, in our schools, we see that students, you know, the teacher is uh, making them understand, uh, suppose they have taken parts of his speech, okay? So what they are they doing, that basically they start with the definition. That is not acceptable. I mean, when you are teaching somebody, you know, some student or, or the beginners, if you are making them understand with the definition, you know, so uh, mm -hmm. there are lots of bombastic words which you are not able to understand. So first of all, you will have to make them understand the whole concept of grammar with giving a lot of uh, examples. examples. Okay? Mm -hmm. So first, suppose that, you know, you should, uh, you are teaching how to construct a sentence. So first you should take verb. Okay. okay. So mm -hmm. verb, is, what is verb? It is an action verb. It shows movement. Okay. So it is very prevalent and very important in whole, uh, you know, uh, the the parts of his speech. Very, very important verb. So first of all, you will tell the student that this is verb. It works like this. And uh, you will give, a, uh, you know, a couple of examples to make the student understand. Yeah, this is verb. And this movement thing is there. So there should be a person who is dealing with this movement. I mean, there should be a doer also now who is doing mm -hmm. the movement. So then the subject comes. Okay. okay. Mm. Yeah. First, the action happens. Suppose 
eating, running, play, dance, and then there should be a doer of this action. Then yeah. you the student understand that yeah, there is a subject, okay? Mm -hmm. And subject should be noun and pronoun, okay? So the subject and then the verb, okay? Mm -hmm. These two mm -hmm. things have come. So you right. have constructed a sentence. Remember that when there is a subject and there is a verb, you are able to create a small sentence mm -hmm. like birds fly, child mm -hmm. weeps, Rani laughs, okay? Then you need to make a little longer yes. and you need to add an object. So how you would do it? Suppose you are going to put another verb, another word, which would be either noun or pronoun. Okay. Mm -hmm. Remember that object is always noun and pronoun. So how you can do it? You need to ask verb a question what? Okay. My mother subject cooked verb what? Mm. Biryani. Okay. So this is an object. Have you got it, ma'am? Are you getting my point? Yes, 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 okay. yes. <laughs> so now, Tom killed. Now ask the verb a question what? Mm. A snake. Tom killed a snake. Now we have a little longer sentence. Sentence, Tom yes. Now mm. come to the part Tom sang what you need to ask what to the verb and you get mm -hmm. an answer that is an object remember okay. that subject and object is always different okay so Tom sang a song a song is object mm -hmm. okay so mm -hmm. you got this part. now what you need to do there are two types of object ma'am we usually everybody knows about it that is direct mm -hmm. object and indirect object so tom sang ravi no sentence is not no. constructed <laughs> tom sang ravi how it can be possible so tom sang ravi a song oh. now mm. here is the subject verb ravi is indirect object a song mm. is object. How mm. to mm. find out direct object? You need to ask to the verb to whom. When okay. you ask to whom, you get mm. the answer that is of indirect object. And if you ask the verb what, what? you get mm. the answer that is direct object. So whole sentence is constructed. Tom sang Ravi a song. Mm. My father gave me a ball. So my father's subject gave his verb. Me is indirect object. Then come direct object. This much right. is everything. But ma'am, sometimes what happens that this is uh, in the basic level. A little, hmm. if you go towards the advanced side, you need hmm. to make your sentence a little longer. Yes. Then what you are going to add, you need to add adverb. Okay? Hmm. Hmm. Adverb is answering the question how. So, my okay. mother cooked mm -hmm. biryani. How? Nicely. Mm -hmm. My mother cooked biryani nicely. My mother okay. cooked biryani happily. Joyfully. Mm -hmm. Okay, now I'm, mm -hmm. my sentence has become a little longer. My mother cooked biryani joyfully. Mm -hmm. Now, ma'am, if you really want to take it, uh, you know, to a longer side, you need mm -hmm. to add small small adjuncts you know mm -hmm. which mm -hmm. is called adverbials too okay. then you need to ask then you need to ask why when where and how okay mm -hmm. and this thing will happen if you are adding a small small phrases okay that is mm -hmm. called adverb phrases so my sentence would be my mother cooked biryani nicely now, when in the evening, in the evening is okay. answering the question when. Okay. When, yes. In the mm. evening, where in the kitchen, then comes why for my birthday. So, oh. in the kitchen, in the okay. evening, for my birthday, ma'am, these are called adjuncts mm. or adjuncts, mm. which mm. adds to the sentence. But basic sentence, you remember subject, verb, object. 
and mm, then mm. he start extra things and in this way you can make your sentence you know a long sentence by adding more and more why when where how you can go on adding and adding and adding and to make a very lengthy sentence this Correct. is the way to construct a sentence now yeah so wonderfully explained by you seriously because many people have this uh, question when it comes to smaller sentences it is easier i can i can um, make a smaller sentence but when it comes to making a long sentence i am not able to do that so right. they ask me that question so so wonderfully explained by you and i hope really the person who has this doubt in their mind watches you explaining it thank you ma'am one more thing here i want to add for those who have just entered into the spoken thing you know yes. they in spoken english it also very necessary for them to learn grammar i mean the uh, grammar always mm -hmm. should come in moderation Correct. but uh, basic things are tenses mm -hmm. and uh, parts of speech very much needed for them to learn for speaking mm -hmm. good english and ma'am yeah one more thing here i want to add for the beginners those who really are juggling with this uh, you know language you know they want to become fluent you know mm -hmm. so first of all they need to have a lot of patience at the same time you know first they should collect a lot of vocabulary common words which are used in our day to day language okay mm -hmm. become uh, grow and uh, run fast so many words are there you know common words they should collect a lot of common but and mm. in the big to not focus more on grammar you know learning each and everything to become Correct. fluent in your life that mm. is not needed mm. so only you go towards it and get the hang of the language you know mm. and uh, mm. yeah so basically they would start with small vocabulary and the uh, small basic grammar that is subject verb object subject verb complement and adding lots of you know adjuncts and at the same time you know uh, they should to speak daily practice is very much needed but mm -hmm. not listen a lot of things initially when you are you know dealing with this language and you find it very hard is very difficult you should not jump into to grab it and to you know listening a lot of big big podcast you know instead of learn, listening this thing i think you go for small small things which would be beneficial for to for you to uh, you know to get a you know a kind of hang of the language that i believe mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. really it would happen you know patience is mm -hmm. very very much needed for learning this language Correct, correct. And the, what is the best way to learn grammar for spoken English? Do they should they we refer grammar books or how do we learn grammar? Look, uh, grammar books. Uh, I think there are lots of YouTube channels are available nowadays. You don't have to go for books. Yeah, it mm. is open that when you are going for books, choose a good book. Okay, mm -hmm. so I would suggest the Raynan Martin uh, books and Nesfield Grammar. These two books are very good for learning grammar. Okay, okay. so mm -hmm. when you are learning uh, tenses, okay, suppose you are starting with tenses, take mm -hmm. only three tenses at a time. That mm -hmm. is simple, mm -hmm. simple, and simple future. Work on mm -hmm. it. Continue mm -hmm. constructing sentences with these, uh, you know, tenses again and again. You do it. The mm -hmm. most important. thing is formation of uh, sentences mm -hmm. the more you do the better you become so that's why it is very much needed to uh, uh, you know to do it continuously till it become a part of your brain till it get etched in your brain so it, uh, yeah so you have to do it then go for other tenses you know first you should mm -hmm. take simple tenses okay uh, that is present past and future and deal with it a lot right make uh, sentences again and again try to find that what is the difference between three tenses how it is used mm. so if you need to make at least you know 50 sentences out of the tenses then go for another one mm. so, mm. uh, books are good because there you find a lot of uh, exercises that would help you to learn the language but yeah mm. youtube Uh, channels are also good you know they are they are providing good material for learning english and grammar mm. so mm. Uh, books are the, if books are there and you have the key book too that you can mm. find that where you are making mistake if you yeah. are correct 
not you know writing that would really help you to get mm. to know them. Mm -hmm. yeah and one last question the difference yeah. between will can would could should okay so first let's come to will yeah, will yeah. you this is the past tense uh, you know future tense you know we use will go and will mm. always uh, it shows a kind of determination if you are uh, talking about it generally okay. what happens that we use will with all the pronoun except i, uh, I and uh, we that we use sell but uh, rest of the pronoun uh, when we okay. use we use will but will is also showing your determination to do something which you are very much assured of doing then you should be well. I will do it. I'll go to the, uh, you know, uh, I will definitely do it. So there we use will. Then what is a uh, kind of past tense of will? And it mm -hmm. also used for uh, taking permission to when you are politely, mm -hmm. you want to take permission from somebody. Would you, would you please do it for me? Would you please, uh, you know, this, uh, mm -hmm. do this favor to me? So we use would. And mm -hmm. ma'am, would also use for past tense incidents or experiences when you want to say something you know suppose that you have spent something uh, sorry you have spent a lot, uh, spent time in the village when you were a child okay mm -hmm. so now your grandson is sitting in front of you and you want to tell about your stories of your childhood. So you will come out with these things, you know, you know, I would go to the school in the morning, then I mm. would, uh, you know, uh, take my breakfast, then I would, uh, you know, sit, um, um, you know, uh, to wherever, you know, I would sit in the temple, then I would chant mantras, whatever you say. So what is also used to describe past events too, you know. Uh, okay yes so, yeah and uh could as as we all know can that is good. Yeah. Of, uh, can good and could is also used for uh, uh, asking for permission to when you want to take permission from somebody you can use it. could you please do this um for me could you mm -hmm. please bring okay so that is you know yeah, yeah it is quite tricky right would and could like i think they can be used interchangeably yeah, yeah, yeah. In uh, in simple or uh, uh, what you call informal language, you know, English. Mm. Couldn't mm. Uh, they, I mean, in, it, there is a very uh, thin bottom line, you know, between these two. So yeah. both can be interchangeable. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So and can be used like you know you can because one thing is there. If you are speaking about spoken English. That time we are not differentiating much that what would be the right meaning for, you know, for us to utter. Because Correct. whatever comes in our mind, we utter mm. at that. Yes. Could you please do this to me? Could you please bring that thing for me? So we are not differentiating. We are not giving a lot of focus to our mind. You know, what should be the right word to come out with? So mm. that is the main thing here. Mm -mm -mm. And you use can when you want to make the sentence more polite. It's like, will yeah. you come with me instead of asking that? Can you come with me? Can so. you come with me? Can you do it for me? Or, uh, you know, uh, can is also, uh, it shows the capacity of doing something. Can you lift this bottle? Suppose mm -hmm. I have this. You know, can you, mm -hmm. can you, okay, can you open this bottle? It's too tight to open, you know. Can you open this bottle? So oh, when okay. you, yeah. you want to see somebody's capacity to do the work, you know, can you climb this tree? Can you bring mm -hmm. this phone? In this way, we oh, use. But yes, mostly, yes. we are talking about uh, learning English, speaking English through grammar. So mm. here, we do it. Basically, we don't see that what is the main, uh, you know, work of these particular, uh, you know, uh, the helping verbs. You know, we don't give much emphasis to know that what is the basic differences between uh, these. Of you know helping work because at mm. that time we were very much focused on our spoken thing you know correct the right to utter with yeah mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. do you take online classes as well uh, actually uh, ma'am I'm during the COVID period I used to take online classes and uh, uh, I'm in my own college uh, students classes not other classes but I'm planning oh. to. Uh, come out with my stuff, you know, very soon I would be connecting yes. with the uh, speaking app. Okay. So, oh, okay, okay. 
right yeah i think everybody should learn from you because you have so much knowledge and you explain so well i'm sure many of us would want to learn from you especially the grammar aspect thank you so much ma'am thank you so much it was really nice to connect with you even uh, i want to focus on uh, advanced label grammar too but if okay. i get chance to explain it you know definitely because what happens ma'am this grammar stuff you know if i talk about gerund participle infinitive students are not able to differentiate between these things you know and they don't mm. understand it well and mm. when they are not about to uh, when they are not you know they don't know the basic differences between these things you know they get confused mm. they are not able to use in their uh, day to day sentences and that mm. is yeah, all these a kind of fear for these you know uh, things you know non verbals that is called non finite verb oh so, okay yeah we'll do one more session for that yes ma'am these advanced grammar uh, i'm talking about gerund participle and infinitive mm. if you have the knowledge of these uh, you know advanced level grammar mm. you can write very nicely not only write you would be able to you know come to a label which is called advanced label english once you get a hang of the whole thing you know mm. once mm. understand the whole concept it becomes very easy for you to express yourself in a very nice way and you would be called you know advanced level learner okay. that is very and i would love to come to your channel again you know Definitely. describing uh, you know uh, what do you call advanced level grammar sure okay. sure next week whenever we have time we'll connect again definitely sure sure i would love mm -hmm. to okay Yeah, thank you so much for connecting with me today. It was lovely talking to you. It was mine, ma'am. So happy. I'm so happy to connect with you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Bye bye. Have a good day. Bye. Thank you. So you too. Bye.